Hi, my name is Nick Psiras, uh, and I work as a structural engineer uh, with Mott McDonald in the uh, tunnels and buildings division in London, United Kingdom. Uh, let me share my screen uh, to start my presentation. Right. So the topic of my presentation is the seismic response of buried gas pipelines in inhomogeneous soil, which was the title of my PhD research at the University of Bristol. This work was part of a wide research project, Exchange Risk, an international uh, research and innovation transfer scheme led by the University of Bristol and focused on seismic risk mitigation of buried gas pipeline networks. Um, why is that topic important at a time when the world is fast moving towards uh, renewables and net zero emissions? Well, it is still imperative to safeguard the uh, gas transportation grid against natural hazards uh, because natural gas is a reliable energy source and is projected to remain so uh, for the years to come. For example, in the US, uh, natural gas is, is expected to retain a 36% uh, share in the mix for electricity generation. Interestingly, some of the heaviest dependence on natural gas are seismically active regions like California and Southeastern Europe, Japan and New Zealand, all, all exposed to significant seismic hazard, uh, as you can see in these side-by-side uh, -side maps. Now, there is evidence from past earthquakes that shows that gas transmission networks have suffered major damage. Uh, for instance, uh, various types of buckling, like uh, local shell buckling and uh, beam oiler type buckling uh, that can lead to collapse of the pipe section or even wall cracking and gas leakage. <clears throat> this damage can cause uh, long service disruption and severe difficult to predict socioeconomic loss. Uh, then the key message is uh, that it's imperative to safeguard the onshore gas transportation grid against earthquakes. Due to their geographical extent, gas transmission pipelines uh, cross terrain of variable morphology and are prone to the effects of especially uh, non-uniform earthquake excitations. Um, this is a long-standing uh, topic in research, but uh, here the focus um, is uh, placed on local side effects associated with soil inhomogeneity. Um, One of the key objectives of this research is to examine the impact of soil nonlinearity on the performance of pipeline crossing in homogeneous sites. Also, we seek to determine what are the, key, the necessary conditions uh, for this seismic load to cause actual damage, specifically plastic, plastic buckling in the pipe, and also evaluate the appropriateness of current analysis guidelines to capture these effects. So to achieve that, we embrace both numerical and physical modeling of the problem at hand. Numerical modeling using a simple substructuring scheme to decouple the soil and pipe behavior, ignoring classical SSI effects. And physical modeling using a novel test setup uh, and the state-of-the-art shaking table at University of Bristol. The core idea underlying the uh, numerical methodology is to capture the response of the soil pipe system at the site level, the soil pipe interaction level, and the pipeline level. Due to the complexity and scale of the problem, the soil pipe system has to be partitioned into two manageable substructures. Uh, first, the global model containing only the site, this is termed substructure one, and the refined local model containing the pipeline, a near surface portion of the soil surrounding the pipeline, and the interface conduct, uh, this is termed substructure two. Two-dimensional site response analysis is performed in the time domain for two generic site scenarios uh, using simple pulses and real earthquake records as excitation. Uh, various key behavioral features are captured uh, in these uh, models. Uh, for example, nonlinearity uh, through equivalent linear response, absorbing boundaries, etc. From this analysis, the worst case ground deformation profiles along the buried pipelines uh, are extracted. In the second stage of the methodology, a detailed three-dimensional finite element model is developed, consisting of a long portion of the pipeline and a block of trench soil. This local model is assumed to rise from truncation of substructure one and expansion to the third spatial dimension. A thin circular cylindrical nonlinear shell represents the pipeline, uh, while the trench soil is modeled with solid continuum elements. This approach allows to predict inelastic buckling modes in the pipe, as well as the evolution of conduct uh, all over the pipe surface accurately. 
two actual gas pipelines are modeled, uh, the transit gas and the transadriatic uh, pipeline. These are uh, distinguished by different uh, slenderness ratios. Uh, to support analytical predictions, a testing program was put forward. The test series uh, used the earthquake simulator at the um, earthquake laboratory at the University of Bristol. Um, and to hold the test soil in place, uh, the uh, shear stack developed at the uh, University of Bristol was used, uh, which enables physical modeling of two technical systems under seismic shaking. In terms of scaling, uh, a set of first order similarity laws were adopted to establish a valid connection between prototype and model. This means that not all physical quantities obey dimensional analysis principles at the same time. Like in many uh, one digit angle models, physical quantities chosen as independent here are the acceleration, length, uh, mass density, and material stiffness. Scaling was uh, driven uh, mainly by reduction of the full scale site length, which resulted in a 1 to 45 ratio for length. Plastic PVC pipes were used to model the prototype. Uh, in terms of instrumentation, monitoring the deformation in the model pipe at multiple locations was the ideal application for using state-of-the-art fiber optic sensors. In addition, uh, high output uh, linear acceleration transducers were also deployed to record accelerations uh, in the shaking direction at free field. Let's now jump to some results. We see here the uh, critical ground movement profiles, horizontal and vertical, along the pipeline axis. Due to the abrupt stiffness, stiffness change, the sites uh, undergo uh, combustion tension cycles close to the discontinuities. There's a smooth differential displacement in both directions, but not of large enough magnitude to cause any issues to the pipe. Um, now, in these plots, we see 2D synthetics of horizontal surface accelerations in the two sites, uh, subjected to vertically propagating SV waves. This plot serves to show uh, more clearly how energy is trapped in the valley and the time evolution of the differential uh, motion of the surface. Next, we see indicative plots of uh, critical ground formation profiles of the surface under strong seismic input. Now, considering nonlinear response, you can see here how much sharper and higher the displacement spikes appear. This apparently can lead to greater loads in the uh, bird pipe, which we'll see next. Moving on to representative results from uh, the second substructure uh, when subjected to the critical uh, deformations, ground deformations from the previous analysis step. We identified here two types of response for uh, low slenderness pipes uh, like uh, trans gas plastic buckling can occur manifesting as uh, sharp local bulges in the zone of ground stiffness change. Thicker pipes, on the other hand, like uh, top, respond mainly in bending, which leads to localized ovalization of the section. In more detail, we carried out load deformation analysis at section level uh, to characterize the critical loads and strains. It was found that there is strong interaction between axial load and bending moment, uh, resulting from the ground uh, vertical ground motion component and second order effects. This is very important as it gives a lower axial collapse. It gives lower axial collapse loads than would be the case for uh, an actually uh, compressed pipe. Uh, also, parametric investigation was carried out uh, using best fit profiles of ground motion to quantify the effect of different parameters. Uh, I'm not going to um, uh, focus on that now. The second part of this section is about findings from the uh, testing program. The observed pipe and ground longitudinal strain profiles uh, confirmed very well the predicted uh, profiles uh, from numerical models in a qualitative sense. Um, from the harmonic motion sequence, it was found that uh, for a given inhomogeneous site, pipeline strain magnitudes are governed by resonance effects and the site response. The tests also showed that for stronger input motions, uh, the induced strains increase notably uh, with surface PGA. The results uh, showed also that uh, the prototype would accommodate the scaled up strains uh, without yielding. However, the achieved test conditions uh, did not reflect particularly unfavorable circumstances for the pipeline. Um, subtle variations in configuration, such as higher soil stiffness ratio uh, and a higher interface coefficient of friction can potentially incur a more critical state of deformation in the pipeline. Um, some main conclusions here. Um, 
the the key message is that the presence of variable soil material along a bird pipe can alter profoundly its response to seismic ground shaking. Peak uh, axial ground strains uh, were measured up to 0.15% for weak bedrock excitations, but were much larger uh, for strong input motions and nonlinear response. Also note that the equivalent linear uh, model tends to overestimate these values. Uh, and peak strains uh, depend mainly on uh, the impedance contrast of the soil deposits on the site and the resonant frequencies of the site. Um, Typical transmission pipelines buried in homogeneous sites may experience plastic buckling if they have a relatively low slenderness, but they're expected to um, experience uh, localized ovalization, not very critical um, if they are uh, thicker. Um, generally, buckling instabilities are possible under uh, the conditions listed here, like uh, high RVTs. Uh, large volume perfections, uh, high coefficient of frictions, high coefficients of friction, uh, low internal pressures. Um, buckling was uh, found to occur at uh, differential axis movements uh, of 15 to 25 centimeters, uh, combined with uh, local uplifts of uh, 4 to 12 centimeters. And uh, more importantly, buckling loads were 40 to 70 percent lower than uh, in pure axial compression. Um, and transient seismic loads should be a consideration for pipeline design when combinations of uh, the above conditions are in place. In this case, the risk can be mitigated by either uh, friction reduction measures or uh, pipe strengthening locally at the zones of soil chains. Uh, finally, the beam on Winkler Foundation model proposed by the American Lifeline Alliance was found to be inadequate uh, to capture these special effects. And here's a list of relevant publications and uh, acknowledgements. Uh, thank you.